Uh, nama saya Busro Yusuf Busro. Saya datang dari Surabaya, ya cukup jauh. Tahun 1987 saya kesini dan tinggal di Jakarta sampai sekarang. So we get to Jakarta and there's, um, you know, beautiful, great food, but being pushed around on these um, little trolleys, they call kakilimas, which means five feet. So um, as they're pushing along, each of them have, they might have a, a a little block or something that they tap on or a little bell but each food has a specific sound so it might be like something like that and you can hear it walking down the street and so you know oh that's the you know nazi goreng sound kind of thing yeah a bit like um uh, mr whippy has his own sound probably is our equivalent yeah yeah <laughs> uh kesan saya dia sangat tepat sekali memilih satu kebutuhan ya Kebutuhan di mana uh, sekarang ini ada jarak ya, ada jarak antara antara orang yang di bawah dengan orang yang di atas ya, ya artinya uh, the power is uh, sangat berbeda ya gitu. Dan pilihan itu kenapa saya katakan itu tepat? Karena memang sektor sektor real itu ya itu kaki lima ini sangat sangat dibutuhkan oleh siapa saja dan tidak hanya kebutuhan masyarakat kecil saja tapi masyarakat menengah juga butuh dengan adanya dengan adanya kaki lima ini. So so I pushed this cart from the art school which was where where the cart was made um, down these main main streets and you know you actually have to push it on the street for a lot of it so these cars are kind of coming past you and things and then across the street and which is what most of the food carts do anyway. And um, yeah, I got these jeers from people. Yeah, why I'm cool it? Yeah, and they're like, yeah, egg, egg and me on kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> they thought it was hilarious. Some of them they're laughing their heads off that this white man is pushing around his cart with shadow puppets written on it. Yeah, and um, yeah, so I pushed it down for about three and a half hours to this little village, um, and and we gathered them around because it's not really you can't really advertise for it. It was just kind of, we're there and we're like, well, you know, we found some people that we'd interviewed and said, come and look at this, come and look at this kid. So these little kids kind of gathered around the cart and we press play of the animation and, and then they kind of see people because they had their faces on there, but they had changed the, the bodies a bit. Well, observing local people interact with Roderick's work was for me quite amusing. Uh, it ranged from um, complete engagement, uh, complete interest in asking lots of questions through shouting out gula gula, uh, which means crazy uh, white person, as Roderick pushed his kaki lima through the Jakarta um, evening traffic, which is like a huge uh, tsunami of vehicles. And here he is pushing his little cart through it, his little bald head poking up above the traffic. Very amusing. And he pushed it a long way too, at great speed, which was sort of, again, odd. And right through to people just going, hmm, just ignoring him because oh, it's just another, you know, strange phenomenon in Jakarta, which you have so many strange phenomena in Jakarta, they all add up to being normal. So you often do walking works, don't you? Like yeah, hair, yeah. Hair, sort of durational. Yeah, and I guess it's, it's um, maybe that comes from um, the learning process, the, the pilgrimage, yeah. trying to, you know, a start and a finish and this kind of building of knowledge or, you know, and this optimism that you start with when you, when you set out and it gets the, the wearing down of the body and this wanting to do it, but eventually your body kind of lets you down. So this kind of battle between the body and the mind, so that's, that's my interest in, in performance. Roderick's artwork, uh, which I guess employs what's been known as relational aesthetics or site-specific artwork, or in his case, moving sites, is very common, I think, to a lot of uh, contemporary Indonesian artists, they deploy the, the same sort of strategy and often the same sort of tactics too. Because of that, uh, uh, that deep embedding still in traditional art forms that, that we have all around us, but at the same time them coming into conflict, or not conflict necessarily, but even uh, just being ignored by uh, modern Indonesia so that we we hear about art forms disappearing, languages disappearing all the time. So a lot of contemporary artists in Indonesia will pick up on these this trends, this sadness, I guess, or excitement, whatever it can be, 
and try and deal with it in some way. So you get all sorts of people creating site-specific works. Uh, installations in particular are very, very common, very popular. Um, collectors are even buying them. <laughs>